Now let's look at the dichotomous search of, for a minimum of a function f of x that's unimodal. That means only has one local minimum on the interval in, under consideration. So I'll just remind you that if the interval, say, is from a naught to b naught, then in the dichotomous search, what we do is um, divide that interval into four subintervals with three points called d, c, and e. And then we evaluate the function at these three points and get f of d, f of c, f of e. And then what we know is that wherever the minimum is, it must be in the two subintervals which are either side of the smallest one of these. So, for example, if f of d is the smallest, then the minimum has to be in this interval from a0 to c. So the next iteration we might call that a1 and b1, because we know the, the minimum now lies in there. And the reason that that follows is by, for example, contradiction. Suppose the minimum, this is the smallest one of those three values, but the minimum is over here. What that means is, uh, when you look at the function either side of c, since f of d is less than c, the function goes down towards d. And if the minimum is over here, then it must go down this way from c. So function value is going down, which means it's not unimodal. So the minimum must be in there if that's the minimum. Okay, now what we're interested in now is how does this length of the interval decrease as we do more and more iterations? And the answer that you can see from here is that each iteration, the interval under consideration halves. So after n iterations, the length of the nth interval that we know the minimizer in is in is the initial length, b0 minus a0, halved n times. And uh, now, what does that tell us? This now tells us how many iterations we need to um, do. So if we require a minimum minimizer um, to an error L over 2. That means that, that we need the interval length after n iterations to be less than or equal to L. So then we can say the minimizer is the middle of that in interval, plus or minus half of its length. So the question is, when does this hold? How many n do we need to get that? So we need ln b0 minus a0 over 2 to the n to be less than or equal to l, 2 to the n. OK, divide by L, multiply by 2 to the n. So that's B0 minus A0 over L is less than or equal to 2 to the n. And they're both positive, so that's fine. Take the logarithm of both sides to any base. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we go log B0 minus A0 over L is less than or equal to N log 2. And hence n has to be bigger than or equal to log of b0 minus a0 over l divided by log 2. And from your knowledge of the logarithm properties, we can write that as log to the base 2, b0 minus a0 over l, somewhat more compactly. No, so n has to be bigger than or equal to that. And the smallest n, the fewest amount of iterations, is when n is the smallest integer that's just bigger than or equal to that. And we denote that as um, the ceiling function. So the ceiling of log 2 of b0 minus a0 over l. And so right at the outset, we know how many iterations we need to do, and we can code that.